Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter and sometimes known as Communication Sunday. So during the homily today, I'm going to synopsize the letter from Pope Francis on Communication Sunday. And this letter goes out to the whole church in the world. I'll only have one reading though, the first one from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at God's right hand. I can see heaven thrown open, he said, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, all the members of the council shouted out and stopped their ears with their hands. Then they all rushed at him, sent him out of the city and stoned him. The witnesses put down their clothes at the feet of a young man called Saul, and as they were stoning him, Stephen said in invocation, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and said aloud, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And with these words he fell asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This then is a synopsis of the Pope's letter. Dear brothers and sisters, last year on Communication Sunday, we reflected on the need to come and see. Well, come and listen is the theme of this year's um, Communication Sunday message. Listening is paramount when it comes to good communication and a condition for genuine dialogue. A respected psychiatrist accustomed to treating the wounds of the mind was once asked what the greatest need of human beings is. He replied, the greatest desire is to be heard. St. Paul would affirm that faith comes through hearing. And among the five senses, the one favored by God seems to be hearing. However, if the message is unwelcome, human beings tend to close their ears so that they do not have to listen. The refusal to listen often ends up turning into aggression towards the other, as happened to those listening to the deacon St. Stephen in the first reading today. The reading says they cover their ears and they all turned at once and began to stone him. Fundamentally, listening is a dimension of love. When anyone says to you, thank you for listening, to me, that's a great compliment. We all have ears. Well, we have two ears and one mouth, suggesting to me that we listen twice as much as to when we talk. How we all have ears, but many times even those with perfect hearing are unable to hear another person. Listening concerns a whole person. The true seat of listening is the heart. Though he was very young, King Solomon in the Old Testament, he proved himself wise because he asked the Lord to grant him a listening and understanding heart. That could be our prayer today to the Lord. Lord, please give me a listening and understanding heart. Mary is our shining example here. Regarding the extraordinary events surrounding the birth of Jesus, Scripture says that Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. That's what we call listening with the heart. In receiving the Word of God through our ears, we too allow it, as it were, to drop from our head into our heart to make it our own in the hope, of course, that it won't stay in our heart, we will 
be transmitted to our hands where we actually put it into action. There is a kind of hearing, the Pope says, that is opposite of listening, that is eavesdropping. In fact, eavesdropping and spying, exploiting others for our own interests, is an ever-present temptation that nowadays seems to have become more acute in the age of social networks. The lack of listening, which we experience so often in daily life, is unfortunately also present in public life, where instead of listening to each other, we often talk past each other. In reality, in many dialogues, we do not communicate at all. We are simply waiting for the other person to finish speaking in order to impose our point of view. Listening is therefore the first indispensable ingredient of dialogue and good communication. In the church, too, there's a great need to listen to and to hear one another. And this has particularly been emphasized in the synodal pathway, the synodal church, which we're all engaged in, are supposed to be engaged in. Listening is the most precious and life-giving gift that we can give each other as Christians. Thus, you might have heard of the Protestant theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he reminds us that the first service we owe to others consists in actually listening to them. Whoever does not know how to listen to his brother or sister will soon no longer be able to listen to God either, he says. The most important task in pastoral activity is the apostolate of the ear to listen before speaking as the Apostle James exhorts. And this is what he said. Let every man and woman be quick to hear, but slow to speak. Freely giving some of our own time to listen to people is the first act of charity. There is no substitute for it. Now, here is a little ditty that we learned as children, and it has relevance here. A wise, old owl, a wise old owl sat on an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't you be like that wise old bird? Talking about listening, thank you for listening today, and God bless you all.